Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, in the previous class, we started uh, discuss, discussing about the boiling heat transfer. You know, boiling uh, is a phase change process in which the liquid is converted into a vapor. And boiling occurs whenever the liquid uh, comes in contact with a surface which is maintained, uh, that surface is maintained higher than that of the saturation temperature of the liquid, then the boiling occurs. Uh, you come across the different types of boiling, pole boiling, flow boiling, and you study the different, uh, uh, we come across the uh, different types of boiling regimes like uh, uh, natural convection boiling regime, uh, nucleation, uh, nucleate uh, boiling regime, uh, then film boiling regime. In that film boiling, you come across the uh, stable film boiling as well as the unstable boiling regime. At the same time, uh, we discussed about the, the bubble growth mechanism, why the, the bubble uh, disappear in the liquid and it raised to the surface that we have discussed. Okay, when the, uh, the inside vapor temperature is less than that of the, if it is higher than that of the surrounding uh, uh, liquid, then the heat, con heat flow from the bubble to the surrounding fluid takes place so that the bursting will take place so that will disappear. Suppose if the uh, temperature of the bubble is, uh, if the surface temperature is higher than that of the that bubble temperature, then the heat flow takes place from the, the liquid to the, the bubble. So it will grow in size and it may detach from the surface. This way come across. And at the same time, you, uh, we discussed about the, the different uh, correlations for the different boiling regimes. For natural convection boiling regime, what are all the equations? The same equations can be used what you have learned in the previous chapters, natural convection heat transfer process, then uh, nucleate boiling uh, regime, we, come, we discussed about the correlations, okay? And the same correlations are available in the heat and mass transfer data handbook. And we also come across the, the, uh, the correlations for the film boiling regime. Now let us uh, start with the condensation heat transfer. This condensation heat transfer is also a phase change process in which here, uh, the condensation of the vapor will take place. I can say the fluid will be in the vapor state whenever this vapor comes in contact with the surface which is maintained, maintained at a temperature less than the saturation temperature of the vapor. Okay, then I mean to say it is a uh, vapor is also a fluid. You can say the less uh, temperature less than that of the saturation temperature of the fluid. Now you can say then the condensation occurs. This condensation is a convection process Con similar to the boiling condensation is also a, a convection process condensation occurs just now i have mentioned when a vapor is in contact with a surface maintained at a temperature lower than the saturation temperature of the vapor and we come across the uh, the one equation given by newton's law of cooling equation the same equation also can be used uh, to calculate or to evaluate or to know the, the condensation heat flux Condensation heat flux from a vapor to the solid surface is given by Newton's law of cooling. This Newton's law of cooling you, you studied the heat flux is given by H delta T. Here the only change the equation what you have come across uh, with respect to boiling heat transfer and uh, here the condensation heat flux uh, with respect to uh, con condensation heat transfer. The only change is the place of the temperature terms. There in boiling the same equation, it is uh, Q boiling is equal to H into Ts minus T surface, where T saturation, Ts minus T saturation, T sat I can say, where in boiling surface temperature is more than that of the saturation temperature of the fluid. Here in this case, the saturation temperature is more than the surface temperature, hence it is T sat minus Ts, that is the only change, hence what we can say, the Condensation is a reverse process of boiling or boiling is a reverse process of condensation. Either way, we can define. Now well, let us classify the condensation heat transfer. Condensation heat transfer classified into two types, so film wise condensation and drop wise condensation. Here in film wise condensation, condensation takes place continuously over the surface. And Condensed liquid is removed from the surface by the motion resulting from the gravity. Here, whenever the, the vapor, let us take an example of a, a steam, the after a, performing the work which is coming out of the steam turbine, it is, if it is allowed on a surface, okay, vertical surface, a thin film is formed on the surface. Okay. 
that is called the uh, film wise condensation and it is continuous continuous film is there and condensed liquid is removed from the surface by the motion resulting from gravity here you can see the a condensation of a steam on a copper plate okay you can see this is the thermocouple probe this uh, look at the, the movement of the cursor here uh, arrow mark it is a thermocouple uh, uh, probe which is used to measure the temperature here you can see the drop wise condensation and this is the film wise condensation drop wise condensation occurs on a, the contaminated surfaces whereas the uh, uh, on a clean surface clean uncontaminated surface the film condensation occurs this uh, photograph uh, which is showing the condensation of steam on a copper plate this is the, the thermocouple probe to measure the temperature this is the film condensation you can see the the film which is formed on the surface which is occurring on a clean uncontaminated surface whereas the drop wise condensation occurs on the the contaminated surfaces or if the surface is rough if it is having cavities then drop wise condensation will occur now let us discuss in brief about the film wise condensation on a vertical plate or a vertical surface okay now here you know uh, we are all aware uh, in convection chapters both natural as well as uh, con post convection heat transfer the purpose is to uh, develop an expression or to find the convective heat transfer coefficient after developing the equation now at this uh, your level you have studied uh, using the equations available in the heat and mass transfer data handbook you you have determined the value of the h in this uh, case also film wise condensation on a vertical plate we are developing an expression to a theoretical equation to find out the the value of h in fil film wise condensation on a vertical plate so here you can see the this is the plate on which uh, this uh, uh, let us look at the uh, please look at the cursor moving here this is the plate and this is the formation of the film it is moving in the uh, vertical direction movement it is a y direction and this is the vertical direction is the x here y it is denoted here the, it is starting from this and you can see the delta is the film thickness you can see the idealized velocity profile here uh, temperature profile how it is given and it is uh, moving uh, the liquid is continuously moving due to gravity now let us consider a small elemental area here of this uh, film of uh, thickness having dx at a just dx in the x direction so this is you can see this is delta minus y this thickness and this is dx okay here I, we have taken it as delta this is y delta minus this portion is delta minus y what you can show here the forces which are acting on this uh, element a small element under consideration are the buoyancy force you know it occurs in the upward direction which is shown here buoyancy force is given by rho v g into delta minus y into b d x b d x is the area okay b d x is the area shear force occurs you know this is mu l okay see whenever the the fluid moves over the surface you come across the shear force this you have already aware you have learned in your fluid mechanics as well as the convection chapters this shear force is given by this mu l into d u by d y into b d x and self weight of the element here it is rho l into g delta minus y into b d x b d x is the area analytical relation so we are developing analytical relation for the heat transfer coefficient in film condensation on a vertical plate and this was first developed by nusselt in 19 16 you, you have come across the nusselt number so this uh, analytical relation for the heat transfer coefficient in film condensation on a vertical plate was first developed by nusselt in the year 1916 uh, to develop this analytical relation for the heat transfer coefficient in film condensation on a vertical plate nusselt has developed this equation with the following assumptions following assumptions first assumption the plate is maintained at a uniform temperature ts surface temperature of the plate which is less than the saturation temperature of the vapor so for condensation to occur the plate temperature has to be less than that of the vapor temperature that is tsat the velocity of the vapor is low so or we can say zero so that it exerts no drag on the condensate no viscous shear on the liquid vapor in interface just look at this here this is the liquid vapor interface so there no shear on this no velocity of the vapor is low or zero you can say so that the it exerts no drag on the condensate that means no viscous shear on the 
liquid vapor interface the downward flow of condensate under the influence of gravity is laminar it is a laminar film wise condensation on a vertical plate for that we are uh, developing the analytical expression to find the convective heat transfer coefficient the downward flow of condensate under the influence of gravity is laminar and remember fluid properties are constant we are assumed that one of the assumption made by nestle was the fluid properties are constant the acceleration of the condensate layer is negligible because it is moving under the gravity if at all any acceleration is there it is neglected heat transfer across the liquid film is by pure conduction hence the temperature distribution is linear so we have they we have that he has assumed that no convection currents in the liquid film heat transfer across the liquid film is pure by pure conduction hence the temperature distribution is linear that means no convection currents in the liquid film it is by pure conduction the velocity distribution ui at any location x across the condensed layer is determined by, by writing a force balance on a small volume element in the previous slides uh, we, uh, you, we have seen uh, the condensation on a vertical plate and we have taken the small volume element you have seen the force balance written on that element and to determine this uh, velocity distribution how the velocity is distributed it is uh, determined by writing the uh, force balance on a small volume element force acting downward is the weight of the uh, liquid element you have seen in the slide previous slides uh, previous slides one of the slide uh, on a force uh, on a small volume element under consideration and the forces acting downwards are the viscous shear force and the buoyancy force so upward any uh, sign convention okay you can say either upward or the uh, downward okay upward the forces acting upward are the viscous shear force and the buoyancy force force acting downward is the weight of the liquid element and the forces acting upward are the viscous shear force and the buoyancy force equating now let us equate the forces by applying the newton's second law of motion that is when the acceleration is zero so this is you have seen this left hand side what is this the force acting due to weight of the element other two are the the viscous force as well as the the buoyancy force it is self weight of the element is rho l g into bracket delta minus y b into dx that is equal to mu l du y ds b into b dx is the area plus rho v g into delta minus y into b dx so just uh, b dx is eliminated as a common factor and if you rearrange the terms this du by dy is equal to we get g into rho l minus rho v into delta minus y divided by mu l here in this equation delta is the thickness of the condensate layer at the position x mu is the viscosity okay and uh, l means liquid it uh, l stands for liquid and uh, v stands for vapor mu l rather it is uh, mu l is the viscosity of the liquid subscripts 1 and v refer to the liquid and vapor phases just now i mentioned subscripts 1 and v l sorry not 1 subscripts l and v refer to the liquid and vapor phases now let us integrate the equation 5.4 subjected to the boundary conditions so the boundary conditions are u is equal to 0 at y equal to 0 integral of this du by dy integral of g into rho l minus rho v into delta minus y by mu l so performing the integration we will get velocity distribution ui it is g is a constant rho l minus rho v is a constant okay uh, then mu l as it is it is taken just y is the variable here okay it is delta y minus y square by 2 plus c1 constant of integration y varies okay you have seen the because film thickness may grow in the y direction hence the, the only variable here is the y let us apply the boundary conditions if you apply the boundary condition what is the boundary condition it is u equal to 0 at y equal to 0 if you substitute y equal to 0 here u is also zero so this is a, this is zero this is zero so c1 obviously we get c1 equal to zero upon, upon uh, applying the boundary conditions so velocity distribution we will get g into rho l minus rho v divided by mu l into bracket delta y minus y square by 2 as c1 is zero mass flow now let us uh, find out the expression for the mass flow rate of the condensate mass flow rate of condensate through any axial position x per unit width of the plate where the 
boundary layer thickness is delta is given by okay here film thickness is varying between the zero and delta this is nothing but the continuity equation density integral of this u into dy velocity distribution density into velocity distribution u dy okay uh, rho l is the density of the liquid or it is nothing similar to nothing but the the continuity equation mass flow rate is rho av what you have done so per unit width so per unit area we can say area is not taken into consideration here because the film thickness is there unit width of the plate so unit width of the plate into film thickness is the area so it is per unit width obviously uh, it is a uh, delta is also one unit then area is uh, not uh, you will not come across here because continuity equation you know it is rho av so it is rho density is there velocity distribution is there but per unit width so we have taken so it is area term will not come across it is similar to that of the continuity equation let us substitute the value of uh, this velocity distribution from equation 5.95 into equation 5.96 and integrating suppose let us after substituting let us perform the integration we will get mx equal to 0 to delta rho l g into rho l minus rho u by mu l into delta y minus y square by 2 into dy so let us perform the integration and substituting the limits if you substitute the limits 0 and delta mx what you will get it is rho l into g rho l minus v del cube so it is y cube by you will get something okay this y square because it change, the delta film thickness may vary in the y direction y cube then hence it is delta cube uh, and after simplification you will get this equation mx equal to rho l g into rho l minus rho v del cube divided by 3 mu l so now let us uh, uh, differentiate this equation 5.97 okay 5.97 so dm what you will get upon uh, differentiation this 3 is eliminated 3 3 eliminated so you will get with 3 del square so 3 3 eliminated so what you will get is g into rho l rho l minus rho v del square by mu l into d delta just upon just simple differentiation rate of heat released now let us find out the expression for the rate of heat released dq that is through elemental area small element under consideration associated with the rate of condensation dm okay rate of heat released okay due to condensation process because it has to be carried out through a, the cooling media dq associated with the rate of condensation dm so dq is equal to you know it is hfg by hfg into dm sorry hfg into dm hence the amount of heat release dq over the area dx into one unit to width, uh, just now in the previous slide we have mentioned must be transferred across the condensate layer of thickness by conduction this is because of the assumption six so what i can write now this dq is equal to also i can write it as kl into T sat minus T s divided by delta. This is the area D x into just your conduction equation. What you have learned in the very beginning of the heat transfer subject. So let us equate both are same. This equation number five point nine nine and five point hundred they are same. Now let us equate these two equations. So H F G into D M is equal to K L into T sat minus T s D x into one. Now let us substitute the value of this. Uh, dm from equation 5.98 what is this dm hfg as it is this dm is g into rho l minus rho l minus v delta square by mu l into d delta is equal to kl t sat minus ts it is a saturation temperature surface temperature divided by delta into dx so rearranging um, this equation what you will get it is delta cube into d delta arrange delta and d delta terms one side and other terms on the other side it is mu l into k l into bracket t sat minus t s divided by g rho l h f g into bracket rho l minus rho v into d x now let us integrate this equation number 5.101 so it is upon integration you will get delta delta to the power 4 by 4 because del q is there these things other things they are as it is because no delta term here what you will get here dx is a variable no delta term dx that will x you will get all other terms remains constant mu l into kl into bracket t sat minus ts into this dx integral of x is dx yeah, sorry integral of dx is x divided by 
g rho l h of g into rho l minus rho v plus c1 let us apply the boundary conditions delta equal to 0 at x equal to 0 hence if you apply this condition c1 equal to 0 so the boundary layer thickness del x what you will get it is 4 if you shift this 4 to this side 4 mu l kl into bracket t sat minus ts into x divided by g rho l h of g into rho l minus rho v to the power 1 by 4 this is the expression for the the expression for the boundary layer thickness this equation you will find in your heat and mass transfer data handbook or in any other heat transfer textbook now let us find out the expression for the local heat transfer coefficient you know this convection equation hx into local hx is the local heat transfer coefficient t sat minus ts is equal to this you know we are, what we assumed that whatever the heat that has been transferred by convection must be conducted through the that condensate layer or the film so this is kl into t sat minus ts divided by delta so this works out to be hx is equal to kl by delta x just now we have developed the expression for this delta x now let us substitute the expression for delta x from equation number 5.103 so what you will get this local heat transfer coefficient hx is equal to g into rho l into bracket rho l minus rho v bracket over hfg kl to the power cube divided by 4 mu l into bracket t sat minus ts into x to the power 1 by 4 this equation also you find in any of the heat transfer textbook as well as in your data handbook now we need the average heat transfer coefficient average heat transfer coefficient average heat transfer coefficient yeah it is just this equation you have come across the beginning of the convection chapter uh, heat carried by the moving fluid when it flows over the surface of the plate this equation you have come across it is 1 by l 0 to l hx dx so upon integration with this hx so it is works out to be 4 third l hx at x equal to l this you are already aware this equation available in uh, 4 third hx uh, in any of the heat transfer textbook and in our data handbook also now let us substitute what is this hx from equation 5.105 in equation 5.106 so average heat transfer coefficient will get with it is 0 0.943 into bracket g rho l rho l minus rho v into bracket h of g k l cube divided by mu l t sat minus t s into l to the power 1 by 4 1 by 4 the average heat transfer coefficient as given by equation 5.107 does not include effects of non-linear temperature in the liquid film there may be possibility of getting non-linear temperature distribution so that is not included linear temperature distribution you have seen cooling of the liquid below the saturation there may be cooling of the liquid below the saturation temperature hence the effects of these two can be accounted by replacing hfg by hfg star so just replace same equation h average equal to 0 0.943 into bracket g into rho l rho l minus rho v into h of g star k l q cube divided by mu l into t sat minus t s bracket over into l to the power 1 by 4 this is valid for the Reynolds number between greater than 0 and less than 30. h of g star is the modified latent heat of vaporization this h of g star modified latent heat of vaporization is given by this expression hfg star equal to hfg plus 0 0.68 cpl specific heat of liquid into bracket t sat minus ts heat transfer hence in condensation also depends on the whether the condensate flow is laminar or turbulent remember heat transfer in condensation also not only the uh, the laminar flow it also depends on the turbulent conditions also but we have developed for laminar flow of condensation and you know criteria to decide the type of flow is Reynolds number Reynolds number is given by dh rho l p l by mu l so dh you know it is 4 ac by p that's what i have substituted here so upon substitution cross sectional area and this p value it works out to be 4 m by p into mu l this you are already aware Remember this condensation process you come across in, in the uh, thermal power stations. It may be 
coal fired or nuclear thermal power station you come across the condensation it may be a film wise condensation or the drop wise condensation and remember drop wise condensation is a costly process called drop wise no we need to add certain chemicals uh, to the the uh, feed water so uh, you have you need to break the this steam which is coming out of the turbine exhaust into the smallest possible uh, droplets of uh, uh, size of the order of angstrom so it is a costly process when the steam is broken into a smallest possible droplet size more area is exposed so it is uh, better heat transfer takes place here in drop wise condensation the heat transfer rates are 10 to 15 times more than that of the film wise condensation you know film is a bad conductor of heat okay uh, previous boiling chapter when you uh, uh, you have studied the boiling regimes in that you come across the film boiling so the film is a very bad conductor of heat and the burnout will take place hence the uh, almost all boiling equipments are operated below the critical heat flux except with the cryogenic applications there is no problem of this burnout with the cryogenic applications hence the you need to design depending upon our requirement if you know the knowledge of this uh, film condensation as well as the drop condensation so we can better design your the heat transfer equipments heat transfer equipments now uh, now it has uh, completed the boiling aspects as well as the uh, uh, condensation aspects and this equation uh, whatever you are doing it is available in your data and book okay this equation uh, whatever you have derived this average heat transfer coefficient equation available in your data and book and uh, any of the heat transfer textbook so you can use depending upon your requirement now let us discuss about the heat pipes let us discuss about the heat pipes let us discuss about the heat pipes heat pipe is a device without any moving parts which can transfer large quantity of heat over large distances at a constant temperature without requiring any power input heat pipe is a device without any moving parts it does not have any moving parts which can transfer large quantity of heat over large distances at a constant temperature without requiring any power input power input it is basically a sealed tube containing a wick structure lined on the inner surface and a small amount of fluid save water at the saturated state it is basically a sealed tube containing a wick structure lined on the inner surface and a small amount of fluid save water at the saturated state this concept of heat pipe was first conceived by R. S. Gagler in nineteen forty-two of the General Motors Corporation. But though it was uh, conceived by R. S. Gagler in the year nineteen forty-two, much much attention was not uh, paid about these heat pipes till nineteen sixty-two. When nineteen sixty-two, uh, but in in the year nineteen sixty-two, it was suggested for use in the space applications. Later, it got much attention heat pipes finds their widespread applications including the cooling of electronic equipments not only is the space applications heat pipes finds their widespread applications including the cooling of electronic equipments so this is the schematic arrangement of the heat pipe you can see the the core for the vapor it is a Weak region where the liquid flow passage is, is the vapor flow passage. You can see the vapor flowing in this direction. The this end it is a evaporation section. You can see here. This is the movement of the cursor. You can see adiabatic section. Adiabatic you have understood no heat transfer, no heat flow from surrounding to the inside or inside to the outside. And this is the condenser section. Okay. Here heat is given to this end here. So the liquid which is coming out here it receives the heat and it is evaporated. And it moves in this direction, and it will. And I will explain now how it will work. Just to just know the how the movement of the both the fluid takes place here. And at this other end, the condensation section, it is condensed, and again it moves back to this evaporation section. And this will be one cycle, and it will be continued as long as there will be a temperature difference. Heat pipe, as you have seen in the previous slide, is composed of three sections. Evaporator section where the heat is absorbed and the it is fluid is vaporized. Adiabatic section where the vapor and the liquid passes of the fluid flow in opposite directions. Adiabatic section where the vapor and the liquid passes of the fluid flow in opposite direction. We have seen the 
both liquid and vapor flow in the opposite directions through the core and wick respectively without any significant heat transfer between the fluid and the surrounding medium keep it in your mind there will be no any heat transfer though they are in the different phases one is in the liquid state another one is the vapor state but there will be no considerable amount of or significant heat transfer between the fluid and the fluid and the surrounding medium fluid and the surrounding medium condenser section is one where the vapor is condensed and it is rejected condenser section is one where the vapor is condensed and it is rejected now let us see how the this working of the or operation of the heat pipe will takes place now let us uh, discuss we know at a specified pressure pressure a liquid will vaporize or a vapor will condense at a certain temperature known as the saturation temperature this concept of heat pipes is based on the what you have already studied the boiling as well as the condensation heat transfer you come across the saturation temperature here also thus fixing the pressure inside a heat pipe fixes the temperature at which phase change will occur that means it is we have to fix the pressure inside the heat pipe so that that will fix the temperature at which phase change will occur and you know at a specified pressure or temperature the amount of heat absorbed is equal to the amount of heat rejected you know at a specified temperature if you keep the pressure constant or a temperature constant you know the amount of heat absorbed is equal to the amount of heat rejected this concept has been used in the heat pipes so since it is a very small uh, a pipe the capillary pressure developed inside a wick will move a liquid in the wick against the gravitational field due to capillary effect so the whatever the pressure that has been mentioned the capillary pressure what is developed in a wick will move a liquid in the wick against the gravitational field due to capillary effect capillary effect the fluid in the channel flows in the direction of decreasing pressure you know always the fluid flows in the direction of decreasing pressure capillary pressure is developed in a wick that will move the liquid in the wick against the gravitational field due to capillary effect so it it will not move towards the gravity but it will move against the capillary uh, against the gravitational field due to capillary effect and you know always that the fluid moves in the channel in the direction of decreasing pressure small pressure and temperature difference between the upper and condenser and here small pressure as well as small temperature difference is maintained between the evaporator as well as the condenser ends both the ends it is small temperature as well as the pressure is maintained normally this temperature difference is between 100 degree sorry 1 degree and 5 degree celsius this temperature difference is usually between 1 degree celsius and 5 degrees this much very small temperature difference is maintained depending upon the operating temperature within the heat pipe the type of fluid and operating pressure is selected what fluids are used based on that what type of fluid is used because you have studied the fluid properties in your fluid mechanics depending upon the type of fluid used we have to we need to maintain the operating temperature as well as the operating pressure we can also use the water as one of the suitable fluid in the heat pipes in the moderate temperature range along with the water several other fluids can also be used in the construction and operation of the heat pipes depending upon the temperature range starting from cryogenic to high temperature applications we not only use when you use the water water corrosion problems are there you have to so again select the uh, the materials which are having corrosion resistant okay material selection comes into picture here also if you go for other than water also they depending upon the the properties of the fluid operating pressure as well as the temperature we need to choose the material so again material science comes into picture which is a beautiful subject that you have studied in your either third or the fourth semester of your undergraduate degree now let us discuss what are all the desirable properties of the heat pipes fluids desirable properties of the heat pipes fluids desirable properties of the heat pipes fluids one is the temperature range and fluids selected 
must have high surface tension to enhance the capillary effect fluid selected must have high surface tension to enhance the the capillary effect because you no know, due to the capillary effect only the fluid is moving from one section to another section so the fluid must be compatible with the weak material whatever the weak material that you are selecting there should not be any reaction between the weak material as well as the this fluid selected chemical stability is one of the requirement it should be chemically stable easily available and low cost so hence the desirable properties of the heat pipe fluids are the temperature range suppose my requirement is a large temperature range but it is suitable only for the small temperature range then i cannot select that one as the heat pipe fluid so different fluids are having their different ranges to use in the heat pipes first we have to study the properties of the fluids what temperature range it is having it can be used in the heat pipes surface about the surface tension of the that particular fluid that is required to enhance the capillary effect this your knowledge of surface tension you have studied in your fluid mechanics subjects compatible with the weak material so it has to be uh, it should not react with the weak material if it is reacting it is of no use so you have to select the compatible fluid with with the weak material chemically stable no chemical reaction it should not react with the other parts of the heat pipes also easily available and it should have low cost so these are the uh, some of the fluids you are looking in the table uh, some of the fluids having suitable temperature ranges for fluids used in the heat pipes okay different uh, depending upon your requirement you can choose the i have given some examples here you will refer to uh, heat and mass transfer textbook so you come across the number of the fluids which are having suitable for different applications so if you take an example of a helium so when you are this is a cryogenic application so normally in the minus temperature fluids the temperature range with negative sign they are suitable for the cryogenic applications so depending upon our requirement you can choose what temperature range is required helium if you use and cost also comes into picture availability comes into picture many parameters uh, desirable properties in the previous slide we have studied looking at those desirable properties it is possible to choose the the required one helium minus 271 to minus 268 hydrogen minus 259 to minus 240 neon minus 248 to minus 230 nitrogen minus 210 to minus 150 methane minus 180 to minus 82 degrees ammonia minus 78 to minus 130 water so it can be used between 5 and 230 degree celsius this temperature range cesium 400 to 1000 sodium 500 to 1200 lithium you can see 850 to 1600 so lithium batteries you might have heard just mobile phones so how the heat of that mobile is rejected using the heat pipes your computers space applications okay all these are you come across the heat pipes to dissipate heat from that device to the surrounding atmosphere hence heat pipes are preferred in some critical applications in spite of their high initial cost remember heat pipes are costly affair because of the following advantages though they are having high initial cost they are having some of the following advantages now let us discuss about these advantages heat pipes are very effective heat transfer devices as the boiling and condensation processes are associated with very high heat transfer coefficient you know when the heat transfer coefficient is very high, it can transfer large amounts of heat heat pipes are you come across the boiling and condensation processes and obviously boiling and condensation are associated with a very high heat transfer coefficient this is one of the advantage conductivities of the heat pipes are several hundred times more than that of the copper or silver you know the better conductivities materials which are having better conductivities we come across we have studied in the very first beginning of the heat and mass transfer subject we come across in our data handbook as well as in any of the heat transfer textbook copper and silver are having the highest thermal conductivities but compared to copper and silver heat pipes are having several hundred times more conductivity just imagine heat pipe with water as the working fluid 
has an effective thermal conductivity of 1 lakh watt per meter degree celsius compared to copper which is having a conductivity of just 400 just to imagine where is the 1 lakh watt per meter degree kelvin and where is the copper it is possible to have the conductivity of heat pipe up to 4 lakh watt per meter degree celsius which is 1000 times more than that of the copper with the heat pipe it is possible to have the conductivity up to 4 lakh watt per meter degree celsius which is 1000 times more than that of the copper let us as an example a 15 cm long 0.6 cm diameter heat pipe with water as a working fluid can transfer heat at a rate of 300 joules per second just imagine a small heat pipe 15 cm long 0.6 cm diameter with water as a working fluid can transfer heat at a rate of 300 joules per second but is a costly affair okay how beautiful it is so if anybody interested so uh, you can take this heat pipes as one of the project work and you can reduce the cost and it is a beautiful project work so that it will give hw placement very immediately let me stop uh, this completed the boiling heat transfer condensation heat transfer and uh, some basic introduction about the heat pipe why the heat pipe is taken here is because it involves the boiling as well as the condensation so a small portion of it is introduced in your syllabus heat pipes uh, let me stop we will continue with the problems in the next class